Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode and I am so excited because I have John Stein who owns the Baker's Crust and we have Thomas Van Driver. Van Diver. Yes, ma'am. I almost said Van Driver. Van Diver, who both uh, John and Thomas own the Neighborhood Harvest Correct. together. Correct. And I will tell you right now, my absolute most favorite restaurant is Baker's Crust. Hands down. I'm not saying this because you're on the show. Bless you, Chantel. I'm telling you, I love it. My staff, I'm like, ask any of them. When there's an event, where do I go? Baker's Trust. I'm like, oh, do we have this event? Baker's Trust. Where are we going? Baker's Trust. They have the best hamburger known to man. It's called the Gotta Have It Burger. I get it with uh, no bun wrapped in lettuce, and it is delicious. And that beef is hands down the best beef. It spoiled me so much to the point I won't eat another burger. Like, I can't even eat another burger. It's over the top amazing. And the Neighborhood Harvest, to me, has the best lettuce, the best produce. It's awesome. So Thank welcome you, on Thank the you. show. We're we so glad it. to have you. Glad to be here. All right. So let's chime right in. Okay. And we're going to get to our first question. It's from Alyssa in Virginia. Uh, no, this is from Carol in Florida. Like a lot of moms, I'm constantly trying to find the balance of feeding my family healthy foods and also sticking to a budget. My main questions are about meats and veggies. First of all, which veggies do I absolutely need to buy organic and which ones can I just skip on and just wash really good? When it comes to meat, my husband is a big steak guy. He wants to eat steak all the time. I've noticed there's a big difference in pricing of grass-fed meat and meat that isn't grass-fed. First of all, what constitutes as grass fed and is it worth the extra money? So, that is a great What question. do you guys yeah. think? Well, and there's, I think Thomas can answer some of the technicalities of, of grass mm-hmm. fed beef. Mm-hmm. But at Baker's Crust, that's what we believe is, is offering a, a beef that is, is 100% grass fed and it's not grain fed at all. We get our beef from New Zealand. It's New Zealand grass fed. The, the cows feed on these beautiful and what's pastures. And the what's the name of the farm that you guys It's use? called Silver Fern Farms. Okay. And it's a co-op in New Zealand. And, and they source from these farmers that really have the highest level of integrity, no hormones, grass fed 100%, these beautiful pastures they're raised on. And so we take a lot of pride in that burger mm. you were just talking it about. It is amazing. And, and Thomas can allude to some yeah, of the... And there's a lot to unpack there, actually, about the grass fed beef. And so... Beef cattle, right? The cow itself is not designed to eat grain, right? They're meant they're they're grazers. That's what they're meant to do, and so their body functions best. The cow is healthiest when it's eating grass. Healthy cows are going to produce a healthy meat, and there's a lot of reasons to uh, to look to grass fed. It's not just the health of the animal; it's the health of the environment. You don't want a meat system that's using antibiotics to keep the cows healthy enough to bring them to that slaughter weight. You want an animal that's being raised in a natural setting. When- well, well, let's say this first. I I do want to say this. Like when people say grass fed beef, it's like cows eat grass. Like mm-hmm. every get every cow in the world doesn't matter. They right. might throw some corn in there, right? right. Mm-hmm. But if you think about it, every cow eats right. grass. Like they're not eating yeah. salmon. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> the hotel fat is profitable. Mm-hmm. And so when they feed corn, you know, they're fattening up the cows, right. mm-hmm. more body weight, mm-hmm. bad fat. And so, unfortunately, that that right. Yeah. So yeah, but all I'm unhealthy. saying is like sometimes people think, oh, this is gra-. like they all are grass fed. They just right. are. Some of them are mm-hmm. grass mm-hmm. and corn and soy and all yeah. this other stuff. And so. why does that happen? It happens because we've taken them out of their natural setting. You've got them in concrete feedlots, right? So if you're in a concrete feedlot, there's no grass to eat, mm-hmm. and so we're importing this corn for them to eat, forcing them because otherwise they're going to starve to death to eat this, and it does create more market weight. The hanging weight of that cow, as John alluded to, is higher. There's a lot more money in it. It's a lot cheaper to import grain than it is to maintain pasture land. But the que- one of the questions she asked was, is it actually healthy for you? Her husband wants to eat steak all the time. If you're eating grass-fed beef, you absolutely can. Grass-fed beef is actually good for you. Grain-fed beef is not. It's higher in that saturated fat. It's going to cause heart disease. But High cholesterol. Exactly. Um, but, but that grass-fed beef actually can work to lower your cholesterol can work to lower your blood pressure and it's actually heart healthy for you. So by all means, spend the money and buy the grass fed beef. Well, and I think what we need to do is make sure because a lot of these marketing guys, right? Mm -hmm. They'll put, 
They might just say grass-fed beef. Well, if it says grass-fed beef, back to what I was saying, of course it's eating grass. So just because it says grass-fed right. doesn't mean that it's 100% number Correct. one. Mm -mm. And there's a new term out there, and it's called grass-finished. Talk about that for just a second. So these are marketing terms. What does grass-finished mean? All it means is that it was finished on grass. It could have been raised entirely on grain. So you've brought that cow. Most of its market weight has come from grain, right? Which means that it's had antibiotics in its food chain because it has to stay healthy. And then they just finish it on grass for a couple of months before so, it comes to so, market. So, and there's, that's what, what's yeah. happening is this. So there's actually two different things, right? Mm -hmm. Some people are saying grass-finished just means that the last four months of the cow's life, they finished it with grass. Right. However, there's another set of people that's called grass finish, where it's actually, their meaning is, it's from start to finish, mm -hmm. it ate nothing but grass, and that's what grass finish means. And so that's why you have to know the farm that this place, this is coming 100%. from. And I will tell you, if if you put two burgers, we, we might want to do a fun test of this. Let's go get a burger from some other place, a nice restaurant, sure. right? And put your burger yeah. in front of me and put both of them. And 100%, I would guarantee, I'd put $1,000 on the table right now yeah. that I'd be able to tell which burger was yours. It's that much of a difference in taste of how much better it is. Um, and part of the reason for that is, as John mentioned with that Silver Fern Farms, it's a co-op of farmers. All of the farmers that are participating in that mm -hmm. supply chain, they know one another and they've mm -hmm. been vetted by the co-op. We suggest the same thing. People ask me all the time, how can mm -hmm. they eat healthier? Right. I, of course, make the selfish mm -hmm. plug for buy the neighborhood harvest. Yeah. Yes. But no matter where, we don't do neighborhood harvest in Florida. And I think we're the, that's where this question came from. The best advice we can give you is know your farmer, yeah. right? Because there are these marketing ploys out there to say, oh, well, it was grass fed, but it was in parentheses grain finished or the opposite, which is that it was grass finished, but grain fed. Know your farmer. If you can visit the farm, if you can see where the cows are, if you see them roaming in the pasture, then that brings you one step closer to understanding well, you your really supply need to, chain. Just so you know, um, we just did a review on what state downloads the most of my podcast mm -hmm. and actually California is number one and Illinois is number two. Really? And so you guys need to send an email to Neighborhood Harvest to come up with a way because I'm telling you right now, this is the best lettuce you're going to eat, hands down. And everyone knows I'm as high maintenance as it comes. So if I say it's the best, everyone knows it is, right? So you guys really need to think about delivering because you guys can ship this next mm -hmm. day and bring it to well, California. So if they get enough people responding they want to, I bet you mm -hmm. can come up with yeah. a way to do it. Yeah, and what, well, what makes our lettuce so beautiful and so healthy is the fact that we harvest it and then get it to our customers the day after we harvest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it has a high nutritional density to it. It's it does. fresh, the flit, you can taste you the can difference. Taste it. Very beautiful flavor profiles. And so, and then a long shelf life. So it's mm -hmm. really, it's and we do our own distribution as yeah. part of it is that we manage our inventory. Mm -hmm. It's cut in the morning, packed in the midday, put into the refrigerator just to be held for six hours because mm -hmm. then it goes on the truck and it comes to your house. But, yeah. And, which, and your your herbs, your cilantro, your basil is so delicious. Thank you. Well, Chantel, you were talking about beef and uh, I guess with the neighborhood harvest, this is very similar with the eggs that we sell. Mm -hmm. that, exactly. that whole definition of is it cage free? Are they pasture raised? Free are range, they free right. range. And so, so where take, are your where are your eggs from? Well, we take pride in mm -hmm. offering pa um, pasture raised. Hundred percent pasture raised and eggs. And they come from an Amish farm. It's a network, so it's just like the beef farm where John's sourcing the meat for his uh, Baker's Crust comes from a network of Amish farmers outside of Richmond in Powhatan County. And they do an extraordinary job. They've got 2,000 acres of land between all of them. And they're rotating their chickens around. Mm. You know, the concept of herding cats, they're herding chickens. Um, it's mm. not an easy thing to do. But they're rotating them constantly to fresh pasture so that they're eating bugs. They're getting minerals from the ground. Chickens will actually feed on grass. They will peck at the roots in the grass and, and roots that are exposed. And so it's a much more natural system than even cage-free eggs. Cage-free eggs mean nothing. So People, what does what does cage-free? Let's talk about that for a second. What does cage-free mean? Means they're not in a cage. That's um, it. That's it. It right. still means though that they're in warehouses. Or they're they're not in a cage for a certain period of time. Correct. So they may only have to be out of that cage for a certain, mm -hmm. certain that period of time. That goes back to what in. I was talking about so, with this crazy grass it's smoke fed. And mirrors, basically. It's smoke and mirrors. You've got to figure out because they say, yeah. okay, 
cage free, how long are they out of the cage for? If it's only this right. amount of time, then it counts. Free range. Free range does not mean that they're free on the range. It means that they're in a warehouse and they have access to a small plot of land. You could have 10,000 chickens that are given 100 square feet of wow. grassland. And so, yeah, but if you're on the far side of the warehouse from where the little door is, chances are you're never making it out there. So let me That's ask you, with that, have, you, you know, you have you guys thought about incorporating that beef into some way to add into that neighborhood harvest. That well, would be a great idea. Well, it's interesting that you ask that. We started obviously as a basil farm five years ago and, mm -hmm. and have evolved more into this delivering fresh lettuces and microgreens as now some, some other items right. with the eggs. Some produce and food goat, items. Goat cheese, honey. We do our own vinaigrette, granola. Oh, I tried that vinaigrette for the first time. Good. I love it. Yeah, thank I you. marinated it in some chicken and right. stuck it on the grill. Yeah. Boom, it Isn't was it good? delish. Very clean. We don't add any anything to it. It's basically infused extra virgin olive oil uh -huh. mm -hmm. and champagne pear white balsamic vinegar yep. and uh, Sam Lambrusca yep. um, red wine Italian vinegar. Mm -hmm. So it's we fantastic. try to keep everything clean. But you ask about protein. And keep it local. And we've just now built a kitchen at our, at our farm out in Suffolk we're going to look into possibly doing some proteins, grass-fed proteins, mm. maybe some sous vide cooked proteins, mm -hmm. but some other foods that we Love want to it. want to try to start delivering to people. So we exciting. always want to maintain the absolute top quality commitment. So we don't roll out a product until we have that vetted until we understand mm -hmm. it. So it'll take a little bit of time, but protein is the next step. We want to bring wow. the same quality that we do on our lettuce. Mm -hmm. We want to do that with our proteins and bring it to our customers. Wow, well the flavor and the taste is a huge difference. I mean, huge. All right, Alyssa in Virginia Beach. The other day I was going out to grab lunch and I offered to pick up an ahi tuna bowl because we eat these together all the time. It's one of my favorite healthy go-tos. But this time my coworker told me she was going to pass because she thought because she heard that there's a lot of mercury in the fish lately. Is this true? I always think of tuna as one of the healthiest clean proteins and I hate to cut it out of my diet. She did mention that she already has exceptionally high levels of mercury and wondering if this varies from person to person. Maybe there's a chance my levels are lower. Do we need to be wary of mercury and how do I find out what my levels are? So, for the <laughs> easiest question one. to answer there is how do you find out what your levels yeah. are? There are specialized and mercury's tests. mercury's really not good yeah. for you. Mercury's not good for you. And so. there are specialized tests. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're not free. Um, right. You have to have a doctor do it. But you mm -hmm. can find out where your mercury levels are. The bigger concern is where are you eating on the food chain, mm -hmm. right? The bigger the fish, there is a higher concentration of mercury. That's the mm -hmm. long and the short of it. Um, and so you, what you'll see with dietary recommendations is that don't be eating tuna every single day. Don't be eating swordfish every single day. That's a high food chain sort of fish. And the way it works is that it's like putting little cups inside of a medium cup, inside of a big cup. Those tiny fish are getting mercury. It's falling out of the air from mines, from different sorts of human activity. As you move up the food chain, And I think it, it becomes fills. more of a omega-3 question, right? Mm -hmm. You really mm -hmm. want to be getting your omega-3s through fish if possible. So yep. salmons, mm -hmm. some, you know, um, anchovies. Mm -hmm. Try to eat a little bit. Different, different fish like that are, yeah. are better, but, but we all eat tuna and we all love tuna. And so acceptable amounts, you know, mm -hmm. it, or is acceptable. Yeah. As long as it's not. So I want you to say that one more time about, time about what you said about the big fish. Talk right. about that for one more time. So the idea is you want to eat low on the food chain. Okay. And so you've got your small fish, like your sardines, right? Uh -huh. And you've got your mid-sized fish, like your mackerels. And as you move up at So each... talk, about, talk about those. The only fish that I like to eat, honestly, is tuna. That's okay. the only one I like. And That's I the really only one like that you like. That's the only one that you like. Right. So with that being said, what go through some of those fish because I don't know like small, yeah. medium, and large go through. Obviously, so sardines I get that small. <laughs> Ones that are considered small, you know, are krill, which not many of us are eating. That's uh, fish I don't, food. I've never yeah, even heard no, of you're it. You're not going to yeah. eat it. But, but that's ones where they that get are the oils from exactly. But one order online that are actually really good. One that a human's going to eat. Mm -hmm. Those are things like salmon. Um, you'll find pollock and haddock that sometimes are fried. Um, oysters, actually, and that's one of our next questions as we get on the line. But salmon is the big one where you can feel that 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 wild caught salmon, you're gonna be pretty safe on the food chain. And that's one, I don't. I know you say you like raw tuna. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've tried I raw salmon. I don't like salmon, I don't like okay, salmon. Okay, so it's not an equal swap. You move up the food chain a little bit and you have stuff like trout and tuna. Um, tuna's right on so the edge So they're on there. the medium sort of, sized fish? Yep, yeah, they're, they're on the mid size. And some of these bigger fish that are You go up the line exactly to swordfish. Swordfish is in, yeah. like in the bigger size. It is. So you're saying the chance of you having more 
mercury and mm-hmm. more chemicals mm-hmm. are going to be on the bigger fish. The bigger the fish. Yeah. That that is surprising to me. Why is that? Okay, so it's because mercury is not going. It's a toxin, right? That's mm-hmm. not going to leave your body. It's not going to be processed by the fish, mm-hmm. and so the mercury falls out of the atmosphere. It enters our oceans, right? Mm-hmm. The seaweed are absorbing it, right, as they're taking in that seawater. Then the krill are eating the seaweed, and then the small fish is eating the krill. Then the medium fish, right? So all along the line, it's being concentrated. Whereas the smaller fish are eating that very lightly concentrated mercury seaweed, they've now got mercury in them. So the mid-sized fish is going to eat a ton of them. All the mercury that was in all of those little fish is now in the medium fish. Mm. All of the mercury that's in that medium fish is going to be eaten by the big fish and is going to eat a bunch of medium fish. Mm -hmm. So you see it's actually a funnel. You're taking Mm -hmm. mercury from all these sources and funneling it up to that big fish. Wow. Very interesting. I did not know that. All right, next question. Patty in Virginia Beach. I live in Virginia Beach, and one of my favorite things to do is to grab a cold beer and a dozen raw oysters at a local restaurant. If you ask me, it's one of the best parts of living at the beach. I'm not sure if this happens at other beaches, but here in Virginia Beach, we've had a couple days this summer where we had swim advisories on certain streets of the ocean saying that we shouldn't swim there. Gross. I've lived here for 10 years and don't remember hearing anything like this. What does this mean? And my biggest question is, how does this affect my delicious oysters that live in the water? The last time I ate oysters, my stomach didn't feel well. I'm wondering if this was in my head or if there was a tie between this and the bacteria in my water. And I did look up. Um, here's an article that I found. It's called Swimming Advisory Lifted at Ocean View mm-hmm. Beach. And it talked about how literally there was so much bacteria in the water that they weren't allowing you People to go swim. in the water, mm-hmm. which is like, whoa. Yeah. yeah, like you as a human, you're not allowed to go in there. So what is your thoughts on this bacteria and the oysters and so forth? Mm-hmm. So one of the big things nationally right now is the red tide that's engulfing Florida, right? And it's creating mm-hmm. these big kill-offs. And it's, a, it's an algae bloom and it's a bacteria situation where it's, it, and it happens every year. Um, most of the time it actually happens a little bit further offshore. This year, the way the tides have functioned, the way the winds are blowing, it's actually pushed it onshore. So the summer months are the most dangerous mm-hmm. months, right? It's warmer water. Higher Everyone, bacteria. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's going to create a higher bacteria. Yeah, power. and we've had heat, the highest heat waves yeah. that we've had yeah. all right. over the yeah. country, and right? And exactly. the water actually is quite warm just because it's in the bay closer to shore yep. where the ocean has the Gulf mm-hmm. Stream, which also is warm, but exactly. bigger mm-hmm. area that just is just it's cooler right so so those bacteria counts are driven by the warm water that's mm. kind of the, but it's also driven by human activity right and so we're not necessarily maintaining our waterways the way we ought to be we've got fertilizer from conventional agriculture from some of our large city sewage systems right these septic treatments that does get introduced and that's where a lot of these bacteria blooms are coming from mm-hmm. it's the warm water that's accelerating them that's making them dangerous for human activity mm-hmm. but it's human activity that created them in the first place a lot of the times wow. and so how do, what does that mean for oysters um, I don't know that I'd be eating ocean view oysters in the in the summertime months. Uh, eat the oysters when it's cold outside, right. folks. What's that rule of thumb? You only eat oysters in months that end in R or Y. Yeah, Y. I think it's R. I think you're supposed to avoid Y. So stuff like. Or, you, you know, you're meant to have an R. That's exactly what it is, because that's taking you September through March, September, October, November, December, etc. Those cooler months have got colder water, right? Mm. But it's it's tied not just to the heat of the water, it's also the spawning cycle. I These, don't like oysters. Do you like oysters? <laughs> I love oysters. Oh, you do? Yeah. Do you like oysters? I love oysters. Oh, you do? But I always get them from far northern water. waters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Cold> water. <laughs> exactly. Funny. Though I do eat them from the eastern shore, they're still... Mm-hmm. away from human activity. Hey guys, I'm so excited that my new book, Waste Away, the Chantel Rayway, is now available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and pretty much anywhere you can find books. But we also have the audiobook, the ebook, and my new recipe book that you can download all the recipes that I love that I make, and it's super cheap. It's all my favorites. Anyway, if you have a minute to write a review on Amazon, I would be ever grateful. All right, Parker in Charleston, West Virginia. What are your thoughts about buying pre-cut, pre-packaged fruits and veggies? I am super busy like everyone else, LOL, and I find that I only eat my fruits and veggies if it's super convenient and pre-washed, especially my spinach and greens. The other day, I read online that Trader Joe's had a recall on watermelon that came pre-cut, and this grossed me out. I'm wondering if it's this convenience is worth it. 
What do you think caused this recall? And should I try to avoid pre-packaged foods? It's the handling process almost all the time yeah. that creates these recalls. It's the way the lettuce is washed. It's the facility where the watermelon was cut. Added risk. Mm -hmm. yeah. It really is. And spinach needs to be washed because it's on the, the dirty mm -hmm. the dirty dozen, the dirty 15 of, yep. of foods, along with strawberries. High pesticide greens, usage. That so use let's, high pesticides and they're the vegetables that you really want to try to buy organic. So which one is, which ones well. are you saying, look, these we have to buy organic? Like if you didn't buy an organic banana, who grapes, cares? Because you've got mm -hmm. the peel. Greens, yeah. Spinach. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. you know, just yeah, there's there's probably a few more. Is there any a lot of the things that you're yeah. eating the entire fruit, right? So things like bananas you pointed out oranges, avocados, these have all got a skin that you remove right. from the fruit. Mm -hmm. And so those are ones where if you're on a budget, we all are, and that's you a great can compromise. Way to, that's a great way to remember it. It's it like is. you don't want to have the, yeah. this list in front of you. You mm. just kind of go, right. is there a skin to it or not that exactly. I'm getting rid of? Then it's not as big of a deal right. if not I Not as big of a deal. So berries, cherries, lettuce, cherries, all yeah. that. Wash Especially well, some of the organic. smaller, some of the smaller ones is kind of what I think. Like, think about blueberries or Absolutely. raspberries. Mm -hmm. The berries You've are a big get, one. Got to get those organic. And also, if you look at a strawberry, it's got all these little crevices, nooks and crannies. So, so it's really hard to get them clean, and they really store a lot of the pesticides yeah. that they use on those crops. So, and our business important. actually, the neighborhood harvest there. How do we get around that? Because our food is one of those ones that's on the dirty dozen, lettuces and greens, right? Mm -hmm. The reason that we can get away with bringing it to you not washed, and that's a benefit, right? Because you're going to have a longer shelf life. It's not wet and soggy. Mm -hmm. We never cultivate with pesticides. We're 100% pesticide free and in that greenhouse environment where you don't have outside pollutants getting at you. So that's yeah. my advice. To me, that's like yeah. it on a stick. If you can order your fruits and veggies in a place that has a greenhouse where you don't have to put any chemicals on it because they're housed exactly. right. and they're because otherwise no matter what i just grew my own garden i don't know what i was thinking first of all it was a tough year for gardens <laughs> be, be kind to yourself i don't know what i was thinking i actually had a company come out it's called veg out they came they did the whole thing and then they come once a week and even maintain it because you know i'm very busy i don't have time to do it but they still had to put they said we have to put organic pesticide on here and it's just like some uh seven dust i don't know i don't know yeah. what they put on i think like baking soda some mm. other things that they had to put well, on it the pesticide is is something that kills bugs, kills bugs. Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be poison Mm -hmm. I mean, we actually release ladybugs in our greenhouse, and, and really, that's a pesticide. Because right. Ladybugs eat, eat other bugs. Exactly. Oh. And so, An eaten bug is a dead bug. So, so the board pesticide has actually, it's, it's kind of been bastardized a little bit to the right. point where it's just everything's bad. Oh, with that's it. a good point. So there's Chemicals. some things that really are okay that mm -hmm. are natural. Mm -hmm. They just, they just you know, keep exactly. the bugs away. So. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. very interesting. All right, Cassie and Charlottesville. I've been struggling with a lot of autoimmune issues for a couple years now, and after listening to the doctors on your podcast, I decided that I need to clean up my diet and stop eating dairy. Dairy was a big thing that I cut out and have replaced 100% with almond milk and coconut milk. I also have been eating a lot of healthy fats like avocados. I am starting to feel better, but I notice that my weight loss has slowed down. Am I doing something wrong? So let's first talk about dairy just for a second here. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk about the same idea with this grass fed, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about organic milk. Mm -hmm. And sometimes how we might think, oh, I'm giving my kid organic milk. Is that really the best for them? Yeah. We don't sell organic milk, actually, yeah. and we made and it, that decision consciously. Exactly. It doesn't necessarily mean better. There's mm. a whole different definition to really clean, good milk. And, and we now carry milk at the neighborhood harvest that we get from Homestead Creamery in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. And it really mm. has to do more with the A1A1 makeup and the A2A2 A2 makeup. And Thomas, right. do you want to... So it's the, a bit it's, so with dairy, dairy sometimes gets a bad name. Oh, right? it has a terrible name. And, and it's not fair. So like organic dairy, most organic milk in the grocery store, 
uh, actually will have a longer shelf life than conventional milk. And that's people are like, well, that's odd. The reason is that organic milk is high temperature pasteurized almost exclusively. What does that mean? Well, high temperature pasteurization means that you're pasteurizing at a higher temperature. You're nuking the milk. You're taking this product that does have a lot of nutrition. All of us start out drinking milk, right? It's a highly nutritious mm -hmm. um, substance and you've nuked it. There's n very little nutritional value left to it um, at that kind of a microscopic level. Whereas our milk, the stuff that we're bringing from Homestead Creamery, is actually a low temperature pasteurization. It's coming from cows that are on pasture, that are right here in Virginia, that are being shipped to us the day after it's been bottled. So those nutrients there are preserved. There's actually, it's a health food for you because there's still a lot of nutritional mm -hmm. benefit to it. And it was yeah. brought to you in a quick and, supply and chain. And what they, what they say is that raw milk, mm -hmm. just like basically if you took the cow milked it right and then drank it that raw milk is fantastic it is but what's happening is is the pasteurization process even if it's low is not the best that you could do mm -hmm. the best would you agree with that the best milk you could possibly get mm -hmm. would be raw milk if you were gonna gonna drink it would you agree with that or no it is but it's it's impossible to sell mm -hmm. um yeah. it's first of all it's, it's illegal, illegal. It's illegal yeah. yeah and it's impossible to transport so like for our company uh -huh. we've got thousands of subscribers we deliver mm -hmm. to each week it'd be great if we could do raw milk but it's simply impossible, impossible yeah. and so that's where we go to the next best that step. means you have to really have to go get a cow mm -hmm. you'd have to go out mm -hmm. milk it right. and then drink it and you saw how hard it was to keep a garden. Imagine trying to milk a cow every day. Uh, and it's, it's how was the cow raised? The same thing we talked about, grass-fed beef. Uh -huh. Those grass-fed cattle are going to produce a better, healthier milk than the grain-fed yeah. feedlot and cattle. And so if you're, so that's, that's a great point. So at this point, the best you can really get because raw yes. milk is illegal is to go for that low pasteurized yep. and you guys have that locally and low temperature pasteurization really only works with local distribution local distribution so locally produced low temperature pasteurized wow. you guys just amaze me more and more every minute mm -hmm. i talk to you all right so next one this is jen in williamsburg your podcast inspired me to hit up my local juice bar and pick up a yummy green juice after i paid i noticed the expiration date was for the next day I asked them when they made the juice and they said it was five days earlier. I remember you talking about how we should drink the juices right away that we make so that this kind of grossed me out and this juice was sitting in a jar for five days. Can you refresh my memory on how long fresh juice is good to drink after it's been made? I have a small juicer at home. I know that would be best that if I made it myself, but it's just a hassle. Oh, I love this question. Good question. Two it's all about freshness. Yeah, two to three days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really what, yep. what you want to keep. That's anything plant-based, yeah. whether it's juice. Yeah. Now, when you've got the stuff uh, that hasn't been put through the juicer, right? You're talking about the leaves, the beets, mm -hmm. that produce. Still, the sooner you can eat it, the better. Mm -hmm. Organic-based nutrition. And I mean that. I don't mean organic, like certified organic. I mean nutrition that's coming from a natural source. Yeah. Those things oxidize. They break down over time. And so the quicker that you can consume it from when it was harvested out of yeah. the ground, the healthier it is for you. Right. That drives our mission and of next day. And a lot of these juice bars. Starting the neighborhood harvest that we did. Yeah. Yes. It's just because we can, and that's why we had to own mm -hmm. that that delivery infrastructure is because we had to get it to our, or we chose and wanted to get it to our customer the day after we harvested mm. because of that nutrition. Right. That's our niche. That's what we're all about. I mean, it's not rocket science to grow beautiful Mm. greens no. and microgreens and, and mm. growth is and easy those microgreens are so good yeah it's really just about you know doing it with you know integrity mm. and doing it clean and then getting it to the customer getting it to the customer fresh. quick and yeah. and in a temperature controlled mm -hmm. van putting it in a cooler with ice packs to keep mm -hmm. it temperature controlled and that's really the process and that's what our yeah. our niche is all about. so five day old wow. juice not ideal you want to get it fresh yeah. yeah and and it is a hassle but it's not that big of a hassle. I will tell you what I've started doing is instead of using a juicer, because some of these juicers, and I actually have a commercial grade juicer at my house, I've actually been changing it and I've been, uh, when I want to juice, I put it in a Vitamix and I put all those nutrients in the Vitamix and then try to take out, I take out a little bit of the pulp. But the truth is, 
if you want to have the smoothie, I've been kind of replacing some of my juices with the smoothie yep. because you need the that fiber. fiber. Too. Heck yeah. You yeah. want that fiber. Mm -hmm. So it helps mitigate your blood sugar too. You drink some of these juices. Now the green machines yes. less so, but some of these cold pressed juices that are really fruit heavy, yes. you're, you're actually spiking your blood sugar because there's Absolutely. no fiber and a ton of fructose. Right. Yes. Smoothies are a better point. option. Yeah, it definitely is a better option. And for me, I don't even drink a juice. Like my juices, I either get an all green one or mm -hmm. I'll get one with a tiny bit of an apple. That's right. it. Because to me, if you're gonna just eat the fruit, if right. you're gonna have a fruit 100%. juice, like just eat the fruit, get the fiber, yeah. don't don't bring your blood sugar up. Well, the, that's all the questions that we have for you. Do Great. you guys have any other points of kind of like what to eat, not to eat, mm -hmm. that sort of thing? Uh, any last minute thoughts? Absolutely. Eat a variety of foods, mainly plant-based. That's the best way it eat, is. to eat well and be healthy. Yeah, we, do, we hope that it comes from the neighborhood yes. harvest, but eat more plants and yes. know your farmer. Buy local when uh, you can at all times. Even these folks out in California, people in Illinois, know your farmer, know uh, the person that's producing your food. This was an amazing show. I know you guys absolutely enjoyed it. If you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at chantelrayway.com. That's questions at chantelrayway.com. And remember, we have tons of questions we haven't been able to get to. We will get to them. Just hang in there and we'll see you next time, guys. Have a great day.